When rolling three dice, should you bet on a nine or a 10? This is a problem with an interesting history. In the 1600s, it was not commonly known how to solve problems like this. Dice games were often used in gambling, and although I'm not exactly sure how the games would have worked, it was a definite advantage to understand which numbers were more common and how to figure out problems like this. Trying to understand problems like this was really the beginning of probability theory. If you want to read more about this, I'll leave some references in the description. But just before we get into the solution, I wanted to read part of an article. So this is an article by Prakash Gurachan, Some Laws and Problems of Classical Probability and How Cardano Anticipated Them. Cardano was one of the first people to consider problems like this he was supposedly an avid gambler as well. So the part I wanted to read is down here somewhere. Okay, here it is. So he actually talks about this specific problem in this article, and it says, more than a century after Cardano's time, the Grand Duke of Tuscany asked the renowned physicist and mathematician Galileo Galilei. You've probably heard of Galileo, the guy that you know came up with the concept that Earth revolves around the sun. Um, he asked him, the following question, suppose three dice are thrown and the three numbers obtained added. The total scores of 9, 10, 11 and 12 can all be obtained in six different combinations. So I suppose he looked at the numbers on the dice and realized that you can make these totals of 9, 10, 11 and 12 in six different ways using the numbers 1 to 6. Then he asked, why then is a total score of 10 or 11 more likely than a total score of 9 or 12? So you can see they were going to well-known mathematicians like Galileo to figure these things out. Um, nowadays, we understand them a bit better and we can sort of solve these without too much difficulty. All right, so let's get into the solution then. If you want to think about this problem a bit more yourself, then pause the video here. Okay, the key to solving this problem is to realize that the third dice is really irrelevant because the numbers you get on two dice will determine what number you get on the third. For example, if I roll a three and a one, in order to make a total of nine, I would have to roll a five on the third dice. It really only depends on two of the dice. So we can look at the probabilities of rolling certain numbers on two dice, and we can figure out the probability of a nine and a 10 and compare those. Firstly, let's think about the total possible outcomes for three dice. Well, I have six numbers on the first dice. I have six numbers on the second and six numbers on the third. That gives me a total of six times six times six possibilities. So the total number of outcomes is equal to six times six times six, which is 216. And as I was saying, we just need to consider two of the dice. So let's draw up a bit of a table of the possibilities of rolling two die. So here is my table. I have dice one, I can get one, two, three, four, five, or six on dice one, and the same for dice two. And these are all the possible totals that I could get. So if I roll a one on dice one and a one on dice two, I get a total of two. Or if I roll, for example, a four on dice one and a five on dice two, I get a total of nine. Now, you might notice something about these totals. Some of these totals on two dice will make it impossible to roll a nine. For example, if I get a nine with two dice, I cannot possibly have nine as my total on three dice. Similarly for 10, if I roll 10 on two dice, I cannot roll 10 with three dice. Um, so what I'm going to do here is firstly highlight the values that make it impossible to get a 10 with three dice. So if I rolled a one and a one with two dice, I can't get eight on the third dice. Okay, so that outcome is going to make it impossible to get a 10. Also with three makes it impossible to get a 10. And if I get four on two dice, I could roll a six on the third dice. So those outcomes are possible. 12 on two dice makes it impossible to get 10 with three dice. Same for 11 and same for 10, okay? So these are all of the outcomes that I actually need to consider. Again, because if I roll, for example, a five, a four and a one, then I must get a five on the third dice. So there's only one other outcome that matches with a one and a five on, on the first two dice. Okay, so these are all of my possibilities of rolling a 10. So you can count these up. 
So four plus five plus six, five plus four plus three, add those all up and you get 27. So we can say the probability of rolling a 10 with three dice is 27 out of the total possible outcomes, which is 216. Okay, so that's the probability of rolling a 10 with three dice. What about nine? Well, with nine, if we get three on two dice, then that does make it possible to still roll nine with three dice. So let's erase those. However, there's something we need to add. We need to add these numbers in here, these nines, because of course, if you roll nine on two dice, you cannot possibly get a zero on the third dice. There's no zero side. There's only one to six. Okay, so then these are all the possibilities of rolling a nine. Count these up. 5 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2. So count those up and we get a probability of rolling a 9, which is 25 out of the total possible outcomes. 25 out of 216. So we have answered the question, it is more likely to roll a 10. So you should bet on a 10 when rolling three dice. It's a pretty small difference though, right? Two out of 216. If we convert these to percentages, this is a percentage of 12.5%. This is a percentage of approximately 11.6%, which makes it pretty difficult to notice if you're just rolling three dice and choosing either a nine or a 10, you're probably not going to notice this. In fact, somebody actually did the mathematics behind this and they came up with the number 7,600. So they figured out that you would have to roll three dice over 7,000 times before you would actually notice that a 10 is more common than nine. And I will link that article in the description as well. Actually, this is sort of indicative of how, you know, casinos work and gambling games work in general. They usually take these odds of, you know, one thing being slightly better to bet on than another you know, a very small percentage difference, and they rely on that to make a profit over the long term. So as we said, you need over 7,000 rolls to notice a difference here, but at a casino, you have potentially hundreds of people playing, you know, every day, and that's going to add up fairly quick, quickly. So sort of an insight into how sort of gambling works in general there, how people make a profit from it. Okay, let's consider another question then. With four dice, what's the probability of rolling at least one six? If you want to think about this problem yourself, pause the video now. Again, we're going to start with considering the total possible outcomes. So all of the outcomes of rolling four dice will be six times six times six times six. So possible outcomes equals six to the power of four, which is 1,296. And this problem can be quite difficult if you're trying to work out, you know, the chance of getting a six and all of the other possibilities on the other three dice or a six on the second dice plus all the possibilities on the other three dice and so on. But there is a shortcut here and it's to consider all of the possible outcomes without a six. So how many of those are there where you roll four dice and don't get any sixes. And that we can work out fairly easily. We can just think about if this dice only had five numbers, there would be five possibilities, five possibilities on the second dice and same for the third and fourth dice. So we can say the possible outcomes without a six equals five times five times five times five or five to the power of four which is 625. And then we can say the probability of getting no sixes is the number of outcomes without a six out of the total possible outcomes, that's 625 out of 1,296. And then notice that rolling at least one six will be the rest of the possibilities. So it will be one subtract this probability. So the probability of at least one six. This will equal one take the probability of no sixes. So this is one take six to five on 1,296, which is 671 on 1,296, which is approximately 51.8%. And so from that, we can say you're slightly more likely to get 
at least one six from four dice, then no sixes. Again, one of those sort of probabilities that is, you know, just slightly different and something that, you know, are good for sort of probability related games. Okay, I hope you found those problems interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Oh, and if you're still here, here's a problem for you. Should I bet on one six with six dice, two sixes with 12 dice or three sixes with 18 dice? I'll leave that up to you to figure out.